This is Ready, Set, Renovate, a podcast delivering renovation inspiration and motivating you to put your home beautifying ideas into motion. Daniel Builders builds trust in five ways. Competence is one of them. When you're good at what you do and you do it well routinely, that builds trust. In this episode, we're speaking with a truly competent cabinet builder. His name is Dale Van Dunkler, and he's been building cabinets for a few decades. Dale manages the cabinet shop for Trusted Tradesmen and Co. and over the years has built some beautiful cabinetry. You'll quickly realize cabinet building is something Dale understands extensively. So let's get to it. Well, Dale, I really appreciate you joining me. Um, You are an expert in your field, building cabinets. Not many people can do that. You've been doing it for a while. Tell us a little bit about uh, how, just how long you've been building cabinets. Uh, Since... Well, it's been about 32 years. So, yeah, it's been a while. My goodness. Well, now, was it always just kind of an interest that was there? Cause- no, actually, it was not. I um, So I was an art major in college, and I needed a job. And I never really used power tools until then. But I got a job working um, second shift at a company that manufactured cabinet doors. And so I would leave art school and go to make cabinet doors. And through that connection, I met some other people and kind of got into woodworking and then into cabinet building and and uh, worked with a couple different shops and met a few people in the area that kind of mentored me. And that's kind of how I started way back then. And then I opened up my own shop after that for a while and did that for quite some time. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the artistic ability that goes into building cabinets. Has that served you well, studying art and building cabinets? It is. It's kind of an outlet for doing, you know, a three-dimensional art piece. I really enjoyed sculpture and stuff like that. And it really is kind of an outlet to use wood as a a medium to really create some beautiful pieces. Mm. And uh, I do kind of look at it as a, as art, but it also has a lot of function because we're doing it. You know, I'm not just making furniture; we're making kitchen cabinets and, oh, yeah. or, or bathroom cabinets. And a lot of these have a lot of function as well. But we try to combine the beauty with that. And uh, yeah, now that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It, it's not just beautiful; you actually need this for yeah. space, right? Yeah, it's aesthetic and, you, and and functional. Okay, what what are things that you need equipment wise to build some really good cabinets? Because you got a lot of equipment. We're we're probably what twenty feet away from your shop, right? And you can probably hear the sound of the saw running back there. What is the equipment that you've purchased that you got that's going to help you make great cabinets? Yeah, well, we do a couple different things. Um, you know, we have the traditional woodworking equipment. We have table saws and joiners and planers, and uh, you know all the things you would use that. that Again, for years, people built cabinets with that that way. Mm. But we've also incorporated some technology. So we have a CNC machine. Um, it, it's a great and a CNC. Explain that to us. So, I'm not- so it's basically a, um, essentially it's a giant uh, a router, but it actually is programmable. So it's all it's all um, uh, the computer allows us to program all the parts, and it can cut all those parts very accurately, very quickly, and very efficiently. So it, it reduces a lot of waste. And what that really does for us, um, because a lot of people think, well, you've got a CNC that's really lowering your craftsmanship. What it's doing is it's it's allowing us to do high um, quality parts. And then I can let my craftsman focus on the assembly of those parts and all the details. Because really when it comes down to it, the difference between woodworking and fine woodworking is the details. And we can really focus on that because all those parts are being cut very efficiently and very accurately with the CNC. Yeah. Well, so you got the CNC machine. What else is going on back there in the cabinet shop? Well, we're making our own doors. Um, so we have a, we have some routers that we use to, or shapers that we use to make our own doors, which allows us to be very custom with our, with our um, woodworking. Um we have uh, a spray booth back there. We do our own finishing here in house, and again, a lot of that is going to be based um, on again the individual job. Where we try to be very highly custom. So some jobs might be conversion varnish, some jobs might be pre-catalyzed lacquer. You know, um, some have vinyl sealers. Or we, we we do whatever it takes for the individual job to make it what it needs to be mm. for the customer. So. And how are those jobs getting designed? Are you talking primarily with interior designers or are... We do both. So okay. we actually can help. Um, we've had some individuals come who do not have an interior designer, and we have a design team here where we can sit down and do drawings. We do three-dimensional drawings uh, as well as plan drawings and elevations to help you really you know, fit that kitchen to your needs. Mm. Um, or if you have your own designer, which a lot of our builders do, um, they come to us with the designer and they have a lot of the specs for the colors, um, for the you know individual details on the style, whether it be the type of door, or even the type of cabinet. Um, so we, we do both ways. We can help you with your design if you need it, or if you want to bring in a designer and have it done, we can we can try to match what those designers have, have created. Most interesting project that you've designed and built so far? Uh, there's been a couple crazy ones. 
Um, the one we're working on right now, which is crazy, is this really large library bookcase, which is, again, it's almost 18 foot wide, 11 and a half foot tall with a rolling ladder, um, very classically styled, um, you know, because it's supposed to really, you know, fit that library feel, but it has, uh, so it has a lot of detail to it, um, inset doors, um, hidden compartments, you know, that kind of thing under, under, under shelf lighting and stuff like that. So it's quite a, quite a large bookcase, but, mm. um, it's, it's a lot of fun, but we've done some other crazy things too. Um, we've done, we did a commercial cheese and wine shop where we had a lot of, uh, um, some live edge pine and some, some Eastern white pine that had been stained to kind of match that industrial yet mm. contemporary feel at the same time. Um, you know, we've, yeah, you know, of course, all the normal kitchens with the vent hoods, we're doing one now where the vent hood, you know, it's 10 foot in the air with the huge double curve to it and things like that. So we can pretty much do whatever the customer needs. You yeah. Know, they can dream up. Well, we're, we're going to get some pictures. I know people are dying to see some of oh, some of that work. So you build this masterpiece and you have to transport it still. <laughs> Tell <laughs> us about tricky. that process. Yeah. So that actually, it starts in the design phase because you have to design the cabinet in such a way where you can get it into some of these locations and, um, you know, like we had a bookcase not too long ago that had to go up into the mountains at the, at the cliffs and uh, just planning how it had to be maneuvered through the house and up a stairway when it's 11 foot wide and, and nine foot tall. So we have to design it into components that can be put together on site, you know, and so a lot of that goes into the planning stage, hmm. you know, um, planning it out. Okay. There's so much that's developing in this field of cabinetry. You and I have talked about that, how the technology is, is moving just yes. as fast as it is in every other field. Mm -hmm. How are you staying current and staying sharp with uh, the latest trends and changes in yes. the field? There's a lot of, you know, uh, there's forums out there. there. There's, you know, there's magazines, there's YouTube videos and all that kind of stuff. But even with just staying, you know, close with some of the machine reps and things like that, they have machine shows every year. The big one's in Atlanta every year, but they also have one in Vegas. Hmm. Um, just staying connected with those folks. But there's a lot of new technology out there that's allowing us to, you know, bake our, our cabinets even more accurate and more, you know, proficient in what we're doing. Yeah. You know. Yeah, a lot of good information, a whole lot of good information. Now, the science of finishing Hmm. You, we've talked about this too, that that's almost like a whole nother realm. It is. It, tell us a little bit about what goes into great finish. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of variables in finishing. You know, the first thing obviously is the preparation of the actual workpiece, making sure that it is prepared for that finish. And, and some of that depends on the sanding grits and working your way through and making sure that it's sanded to the proper grit for what you're going to finish because stain's different than paint. You've got the mechanical bond between the paint and the wood and, and trying to get, you know, the, the right um, coverage on, on, on that depends on the preparation. So that's mm -hmm. important. You also have to be aware of things like humidity, temperature, um, you know, everything from, you know, a high gloss finish is way different than, than a satin finish on how mm -hmm. it has to be applied. You know, they're out there right now doing a high gloss cabinet. They're wearing the white suits and, you know, making sure everything mm -hmm. is, 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 is clean as, you know, as a clean room so they can really get yeah. that perfect finish. So there's a lot of variables and then you mix that in with the chemistry of the actual finishes, you know, conversion varnishes and pre-cat lacquers and all that kind of stuff. It, it, there's a lot of chemistry involved in how um, not only that those things are, are mixed and, and, and put on the product, but then how you bond multiple layers to each other. So yeah, okay. there's a lot to it. Well, Dale, you're a very busy man. I know you're quite hands-on when it comes yeah. to the building, and it was a little bit of an effort to get you out <laughs> to talk to us, but it's been really good, awesome. and I, I appreciate yeah. you doing that. Thank you. Some good information there. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the episode, and until next time, we'll see you. We're delighted you tuned in for today's episode of Ready, Set, Renovate, your guide design build resource. Are you ready for your home to undergo a transformation? We'd love to talk to you about it. Visit us at danielbuilders.com and tell us about the home renovation you envision. In the meantime, subscribe to Ready, Set, Renovate, and we'll keep the renovation inspiration coming.